Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run for the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as it is looking fairly cold through the rest of this weekend with Sunday probably being the coldest day of the autumn so far with most areas not getting much above 7, 8 or 9 degrees. However, as we head into next week, things will be turning much warmer once again as we do start to see southerly winds pushing in. And from the latest UKV, we are actually reaching maybe 21 or 22 degrees come Wednesday across parts of eastern England where we get the perfect combination of warmer air from the south and some higher pressure building in across Europe. So really up and down next few days from going from kind of winter time temperatures back towards something more summer like into the middle of the working week. As we head into the longer range, as we'll see from the latest GFS, GEM, ECMWF and the ensembles, it is going to be a fairly mild and potentially unsettled second half of October. Now, of course, we've got very warm air coming up from the south next week. And the only reason we're seeing potentially low 20s is because of sort of kind of the perfect combination of that warm air and some higher pressure. It does look like, though, in the subsequent days, lower pressure will be taking over. Uh, and that looks like it could be set in the tone for the rest of the month with unsettled, potentially even stormy conditions coming in from the western, more classic autumnal pattern as we head towards Halloween, of course, at the end of the month. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Do start on the live radar. You can see that actually is pretty unsettled throughout Saturday afternoon. We've got a few areas of rain, some quite heavy torrential rain across northern England. And what we're seeing here is a small wedge of milder air that's kind of in between the two colder air masses. Uh, the colder air mass that we saw towards the end of the working week and potentially another colder air mass that we could see as, as set into tomorrow. In between that, we've got this milder wedge and it is producing some heavier precipitation, mostly on and off showers, as said could be a few bits of persistent rain in here, perhaps across northern England, a bit across Scotland, and a bit across southeast England. But for most, it's on and off, cloudy, and slightly milder today, but still below average in terms of those temperatures. If we do put on those temperatures, as of 2 p.m. You can see we've got some yellows further south, so temperatures into the low double digits, but not particularly warm. And of course, with rain and cloud, it feels a bit colder. And you can see across northern areas, it is milder, uh, but it is going to be slowly turning colder over the coming hours. That cold air is really going to push in around uh, the late afternoon towards sunset this evening. So in a few hours' time from when I'm recording this at 2 p.m., that's when the cold air will be flooding in and will flood in very quickly over the uh, over the course of the evening and for most areas tomorrow morning we'll be opening uh, open up the temperatures down towards freezing even across parts of southern england could be only one or two degrees or even freezing in rural areas so turning much much colder very quickly through the rest of today now do go over to the latest ukv now you can see we've got all that precipitation heading slowly southwards and eastwards over the course of the rest of this afternoon. You can see it does pull away pretty quickly through Saturday evening, and you can see it unlock the door to all the wind. So some of that rain we're seeing across northern Scotland is going to turn a bit more to snow in the next couple of hours, mostly exclusively over higher ground, at least a few hundred metres in elevation. But will that freezing over will be lowering through the evening. Not expecting anything major, no warnings issued or anything like that. Just a warning if you are out and about uh, in elevated areas. There could be a bit of wintriness this evening. But you can see the cold, dry air slowly pushes in and it does disintegrate those showers away pretty quickly uh, around 7, 8 p.m. And you can see it's a dry, clear night. And of course, that will allow those temperatures to drop away very quickly indeed. As we head into Sunday morning, we do start to see cloud building in from the west. That is a sign that milder air is slowly returning. But for most of Sunday, we're mostly going to be trapped under the colder air. So as I said, it will hardly get above 8 or 9 degrees in the best of areas through Sunday afternoon. Maybe slightly higher further westwards, but here we start to see thicker cloud and some heavier pulses of rain moving in. As we head into Monday, we start to see those west to southwesterly winds properly pushing in. And it does start to go much milder into Monday. Milder upper air temperatures, but maybe not all too mild at the surface. And that is more because we do have colder air still trapped and of course the cloud and rain not helping that 
into Monday afternoon you can see it does turn a bit drier maybe a few pulses of sunshine coming through but generally a cloudy day but feeling a little bit warmer as we head into Tuesday, we start to see that wind really move to a southerly. If you watch this, precipitation it is moving from a south to a northerly direction. And you can see it is heading northwards, mostly in the west. And that's because it's closer to the lower pressure. As I said, there is a brief ridge of higher pressure that's extending in from Europe across eastern areas, especially into Wednesday. And you can see this more exclusively by the afternoon. It's slightly drier in this eastern quadrant very unsettled in the western northern quadrant and it's in this eastern quadrant we have this incredibly warm air mass for the time via almost 10 degrees above average and this is where we could see 21 22 degrees it might not be the exact amount it could be a couple of degrees lower uh, i doubt it could be a couple of degrees higher but you never know um, again it all depends on where the low pressure does sit because if that low pressure does slip slightly further eastwards then we could see more precipitation of course that wouldn't allow the temperatures to rise as high but of course that warmer air gives warm temperatures in the east but it fuels the rain in the west so we kind of get that that, that's had a caveat. It's warm, dry in the east, but it's incredibly unsettled in the west with very heavy pulse of rain, even the risk of some thunderstorms with this sort of air mass. And you can see that does continue as we head into Thursday. If we do put on those upper air temperatures, you can see this brief milder wedge of air in the in at the moment uh through the rest of this afternoon but colder air is slowly pushing in from the north and as i said by saturday evening it does flood southwards very quickly in towards sunday morning it lingers for much of sunday but before it gets slowly pushed away through sunday evening and as we head into monday we do see milder air return but still might be a little bit chilly because of the cold air at the surface but it's really into tuesday evening into wednesday look at this warm air mass 15 16 degree isotherm moving in that is ridiculous for mid-october and as i said it could result in very warm conditions it is a plume it's not going to last all too long maybe just about into thursday so it is going to be one or two days and then gone again we can't expect anything that warm this time of year but it is pretty incredible nonetheless if you look at the max temperatures you can see this afternoon temperatures aren't incredible but they are double digits in most of england wales and the republic of ireland colder further northwards well we've got that arctic air moving back in overnight tonight temperatures will drop away quite quickly in the evening but it's really as we head towards sort of sunrise 5 6 7 a.m they'll drop away quite substantially most of northern england and scotland will be towards freezing or below freezing much of england and wales down towards sort of two to four degrees again rural areas could be a couple of degrees colder uh, and again town cities may may only be sort of three or four but regardless that is still very cold for the time of year and of course could bring issues with frosts and maybe a bit of ice into Sunday afternoon, it's a very cold day. Look at that temperatures, hardly getting much above the mid to high single digits, eight or nine degrees at best for many areas, maybe just about double digits here or there, but mostly single digits, coldest day we've had all autumn so far uh, in terms of those top temperatures quite widely. And then as we head into Monday, it does turn slightly warmer into the afternoon, maybe even a 16, 17 in the far south, but most still struggling in the, around that sort of 10 degree mark. And then into Tuesday, turning much milder again, 17, 18 degrees. But it's really Wednesday where those temperatures skyrocket. Look at that at two, uh, at 12 o'clock to 3 p.m., 21 or 22 degrees across the eastern England, where we see the combination of dry conditions, maybe a bit of sunshine with that incredibly warm air mass. Not a single place is in the single digits, just showing you how warm this air is. It is a summer air mass moving in. We've seen this sort of air mass in mid-July, We'd be looking at 30 degrees, but of course, being three months later in mid-October, that's impossible, um, but still seeing something that's 10 degrees above average for the time of year. An incredible air mass moving in. Still three, four days away from arriving, so there is still subject from slight alterations. It does look like we will see very warm conditions. It's just how warm will it get? Now, if we do move over to the GFS operational run now, you can see northerly winds pushing in over the course of this evening with a brief ridge of high pressure building in for Sunday, bringing slightly milder upper air temperatures, but of course trapping cold air at the surface, and that's why Sunday will be very chilly. Eventually, a more of a westerly flow arrives into the early part of the week, and then we see that ridge of high pressure extending in off Europe, and it draws up a southerly wind, unsettled in the west, close to lower pressure, but drier in the east, and that's where it could be incredibly mild as we head into Wednesday. You can see very strong southerly winds drawing up this incredibly warm air mass 
in from the Mediterranean. But in the subsequent days, not only does the warm air mass slowly get pushed away by a slightly fresher air mass, but it's still above average, it's still mild, it's just not quite as mild, we will also see lower pressure coming in for all. You can see greens here indicating lower pressure pushing in um, as we head towards the end of the week. So it does look like it's going to be unsettled for all for the rest of the week. Yes, still high pressure to our east and south, still trying to ridge in. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some dry days here for southern and eastern England. But for most areas in the north and west, it does look like we're going to see a bit of an Atlantic onslaught incoming. It is a classic autumnal setup here. Big lobe of blue there towards northern Canada, parts of Greenland and Iceland. And this is the proper formation now of the tropospheric polar vortex. You've got the European high down to the southeast, and that is just fueling this very strong jet stream as we head through the last 10 days or so of the month. And why I say this could be the pattern for the rest of the month is because when this sort of pattern gets locked in, it can last for a number of weeks. Uh, we have seen this in winters gone past, uh, and it has ruined any chance of any cold weather uh, as it just oscillates between cool and mild, or even very mild uh, with a very strong jet stream. And it could even cause some very stormy conditions if the right synoptics do take off. You can see this uh, by if we put on the 300 HPA winds, very strong jet stream coming straight out of Northeast Canada. Yeah, a bit of a oscillation, a bit of up and down, some kinks in the jet stream, but mostly a flat pattern. And you can see just relentless coming in off the West with very little alterations. Perhaps right towards the end of the run, a little bit more of a dip in the jet stream, but again, that's not really gonna change the pattern all too much. It might just drop an even milder air mass from the south towards 384 hours turning it warmer maybe even drier if we do see a bit more ridge of higher pressure so it does look like this sort of west to southwest flow is going to be locked in for the next few weeks again going to produce a lot of rain especially in the west but if we get fortunate there could be periods of dry and warm weather like we're going to see this upcoming week for a few days that could re reoccur further into october so we'll have to wait and see but a very typical autumnal pattern is looking like it's going to be taking over the rest of the month we see that from the latest gm which also showed very warm air mass uh, as we saw in yesterday's video coming up from the south again we see that southerly push into early next week eventually getting pushed away by lower pressure in off the atlantic and then you can see it does go generally very unsettled for the rest of the month. Not as much of a locked in bluer pattern there towards Greenland, so not as much of a succinct and organized tropospheric polar vortex. So that would potentially allow a bit more uh, alterations and changes potentially more up and down in the jet stream. Um, so yeah, that could be a good factor, maybe a bit more application potentially. So it could alter it a bit more in terms of the air masses. But overall, with the strong high pressure to our south, I wouldn't be surprised if we did continue more of a flat westerly you can see even here the jet stream is still very strong it's just not being fueled by as strong of a tropospheric polar vortex as the gfs was and finally if we compare to the east of the wf again normally wind coming in at the moment that southerly flow arrives into the middle of next week very warm and dry for a time in the east for it does go unsettled for all by the end of the week with lower pressure pushing in you can see right towards Day 10, again, similar to the GM, not as much of an organized tropospheric polar uh, vortex. So again, could be some more amplification, could allow higher pressure to nudge in more at times. It doesn't kind of keep this locked in pattern like we're seeing from the GFS, but it still is a west the flow, we can't deny that. The one thing though this is showing is a stronger European high. You see these darker reds indicating, indicating a very strong European high, and that is nudging in. And I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually saw a very warm and dry pattern here towards the end of the month. If this did come off, it's quite a big dome of warmth there. And if we do zoom in, uh, temperatures here, again, widely high teens, maybe touching 20 degrees. Remember, we're looking almost 10 days in advance. So uh, 18 degrees in 10 days is kind of like a 20 degree today because that's how quickly the temperatures are dropping off as we progress towards winter. But a very interesting pattern. You can see it's not bone dry, but you see the deluges are staying out further west, and for much of England and Wales, we're actually looking pretty decent. So all three runs, definitely showing a westerly flow, but you can see, like we're gonna see this upcoming week, there could be some ridges of higher pressure coming in from Europe, and it could turn it very warm and dry for some brief periods if that did come off, and that would be a pretty exciting feature, as it would give us a few little drips of summer 
if it did come off. Maybe uh, we could even call it an Indian summer like pattern like we highlighted in the video yesterday. And finally, if we look at the ensembles, you can see it's very, very well reflected. Cold the next sort of 24 to 36 hours, well above average into next week. You can see the upper air temperature is getting close to 15 degrees uh, at 850 HPA. That is a above average for a summer month, let alone or an autumnal month, almost 10 degrees above average for the time of year. And you see it does slowly drop off into the rest of the week and precipitation does increase, but increase, precipitation doesn't increase that much, especially in the southeast. It's much higher further westwards. And you can see the upper air temperature stay average to above average for the rest of this run, or at least for the next 10 days, and maybe not as much in the far long range, but still very, very mild. Uh, for the foreseeable future, you see two meter temperatures here from the GFS going from eight, nine degrees tomorrow to maybe 20 degrees by Wednesday. And again, temperatures tailing off a little bit towards the end of the run, but still mid teens, which is still pretty positive for mid to late October. Uh, again, anything sort of above the double digits, I think is, is good. Um, you know, we can very easily get down to seven, eight degrees if we start to just see an inversion taking place under higher pressure or more north and northwesterly flows. So yeah, seeing 14, 15, 16 degrees uh, would be very mild for the second half of October. And finally, if we finish off by looking at the latest ECMWF, it's broadly very similar, even stronger peak there for the upper air temperatures into mid next week 16 70 degrees there from the ecm wf operational run turning off a little bit as we said into the latter part of next week with some higher precipitation but still looking well above average by maybe four or five degrees not much as 10 degrees but four or five degrees and you can see precipitation is still moderate but not completely overwhelming We'll have to wait and see exactly how it does play out, but it does look like a classic autumnal pattern is taking off at very mild west to southwest to the winds. Hopefully we see some drier weather coming in like we're seeing this week as it could turn things interesting and more summer-like. But if we didn't see any high pressure, then unfortunately it could be quite a deluge with a lot of Atlantic systems pushing in. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.